Hey everybody, you're watching a physio named Jonah. That's this guy. Where in addition to being this guy, I am also a huge fan of the NFL and fantasy football. In the football world recently, news broke that Travis Etienne will be missing the remainder of the season because he's undergoing surgery for a Liz Frank injury in his foot. In today's video, I want to investigate what a Liz Frank injury is, as well as why the surgery and recovery that happens after causes players like Travis Etienne to miss entire NFL seasons. Without further ado, let's jump into what happened to his foot, as well as why he's out for the season. A Liz Frank injury is the name given to a multitude of sprains and fractures in the foot, all involving one specific part of the foot. This area right here in the foot is home to the Liz Frank ligament. This whole area is even sometimes referred to as the Liz Frank joint. Now why is it called the Liz Frank joint or ligament you may or may not be asking but are about to hear the response to? Because of a French surgeon who operated on the foot in the early 1800s. He was one of the most famous surgeons of his day, but he really had the foresight to keep his name in our mouths hundreds of years later by naming this part of the foot after himself. To be fair to French surgeons of the 1800s, I would definitely do this given the opportunity. The biceps brachii, I think you mean the biceps jonicus. So now we know where a Liz Frank injury happens. It happens right here. But what exactly is it that happens to this area? There are multiple types of Liz Frank injuries that can happen to the foot. The most likely one that ETN sustained was an indirect injury where there was no direct trauma or blow to the foot. Instead, the injury is caused by twisting, planting, or compression that happened during sporting events. You know, planting, twisting, compression, the day-to-day -day activities of NFL running backs. Ligaments connect bones to other bones. They keep them from moving further than we want them to within the human body. When Travis Etienne injured this part of his foot, the ligament holding these bones together was more than likely damaged. There may also have been a fracture or breaking of one of the bones in this area. So quick and dirty, that's the injury, a tearing of ligaments in the midfoot which may be accompanied by a fracture or breaking of the bones as well. The reason we care about this injury is because of what happens to the foot when this ligament or part of the foot is significantly sprained or damaged. Without the ligaments intact to hold the bones in place, we get a little something like this. The second metatarsal or long bone of the foot pops out towards the top of the foot something like this. You can see it from the side with pictures or images like this. From the top, you see a widened space between the first and second bones on x-ray. Now, imagine trying to run at full NFL speed with a bone either popping out of your foot or completely popped out of place. It ain't gonna happen. Every time we take a step and run, we form an arch underneath of our foot which uses muscles to pull on the bones. This is gonna cause pull on that area that we just damaged over and over and over. So what do we do? Surgery time. I want to make the note here that I am not a surgical specialist. I am a physical therapist, which means that I specialize in what happens after surgery. With that said, I still want to look at what the surgery is like to give context for this injury and the recovery. Based on my research, there are multiple types of surgeries that may be done for this type of injury. The most common though seems to be using hardware, plates, or screws to fix the two bones back together, repairing where that ligament was damaged. Normally, since the bones have moved, the surgeon actually has to move the bones back into the position they're meant to be before fixing it all together. This surgery and the hardware effectively takes the place of the ligament, seeing as it is no longer holding the bones of the foot together. After a period of time, the surgeon may re-enter the foot to remove the hardware, although in some cases the hardware may remain in the foot. Either way, we now have new things inside of our foot, or we've had a second surgery to remove things. This is going to take some time to recover from. After surgery, patients are going to be in a walking boot for an extended period of time. They may not even be allowed to weight bear or put weight onto their foot again for eight to 10 weeks. 
That's almost two months of not being able to even get close to walking normally at all. This time is required though to let the bones heal and get back set in place. After this, there's going to be a gradual return to more and more intense activity. Rehab protocols for this type of injury often don't allow any kind of sport specific activity for at least four months after the surgery. This means that if we think about how long a sports season is, if you can't even do any activities for four months, it's going to basically be impossible to be recovered and back on the field within one season. Add on to this the fact that the overall recovery takes about 9 to 12 months and you get a sense for why this injury immediately shuts down a player's season and can be an issue for later on. So if you're still with me, let's get biomechanically geeky here for a second. When we arch our foot during running, this is going to put a lot of pull on the injured Liz Frank of the foot. The athlete is going to continuously be putting stress through the area where the foot was injured and structurally repaired. Additionally, after surgery, this part of the foot is going to move differently because it was surgically repaired and took time to recover. While the average person may not notice this little bit of a difference, a finely tuned, highly elite athlete will, and this may impact the way that they move. What this all boils down to is that we have an injury that takes a long time to recover from, has a high chance for re-injury because of how much this area of the foot gets pulled on, and may cause long-term effects because of the changes to movement in that very crucial area of the foot. The fact that this injury happened in the 2021 NFL preseason for Travis Etienne hopefully gives him enough time to recover, get himself back into game shape, and be ready for that fully hyped first season next year in 2022. If you made it to this point in the video, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something today and enjoyed the process along the way. If you're interested in getting notifications when I release new videos, consider hitting that subscribe button and turning the bell icon on down below. This helps out my channel a lot and I honestly appreciate your guys' support. Most importantly though guys, as always, move your body, have a laugh today, and I will see you at the next video.